Hi there, I'm Mr. Muso. Today we are going to learn about two important topics. We are going to look on the Vienna settlement of 1815. Then after that now, we are going to move on and look on the occupation of Zimbabwe, who was responsible for the occupation of Zimbabwe. But before we talk about the occupation of Zimbabwe, let's start by looking on the Vienna settlement of 1815. The Vienna settlement of 1815 was held in Vienna. Vienna was in Austria. Why was it held? It was because of Napoleon. Napo, he was a problem to the European powers. He was a problem to the Allied powers. He had dominated Europe for a long period of time. So because of this now, in 1814, he was eventually defeated. When he was defeated, what happened? The Allied powers, they met in Vienna. When they met in Vienna, they were hosted by Metternich. It is said that lavish parties were held. They were enjoying themselves. They were so excited. Why? It was time of excitement because they had defeated Napoleon who had troubled them. We had given them so much problems from 1799 up to 1814. You can see about 15 years being dominated, being troubled, being given problems by Napo. So it was no time of enjoying, time of excitement. Why? It is because they had conquered Napoleon. They had restricted Napoleon. He was defeated. So that is why they met here in 1814, 1815 on the Vienna settlement. Who were the people who met here on the Vienna settlement? These people included these statesmen were number one, Metternich, the person who hosted them, throwing lavish parties, enjoying themselves. He was there on the Vienna settlement. Metternich. Then Britain was represented by Kasurej, Kasurej from Briti. He was the person who was there on the Vienna settlement. Austria was represented by uh, Francis the First, Franco from Prussia. He was the person who was representing Prussia on the Vienna what, a settlement. Then we also I see that uh, we had uh, the Tsar Alexander Katsa Tsa Tsa Russia Apo Parisepa Russia Apo the Tsar was there on the Vienna what, settlement representing uh, Russia. Then uh, we see that uh, France, although she was a country that had caused problems in Europe because of Napo, she was also invited and she was represented by Talenrand. Talenrand from France. Uh, was also there. Come, although you are a problem, come. We want you to sit here, talent rent. You are supposed to see and watch what we are going to do. So, France was also there. She was represented by talent rent. So, these were the statesmen who met on the Vienna Watt settlement. Although they met here as big powers, small powers were also invited. Tonyikatu Iki Iki, come here also, sit there. We are going to see how we are going to redraw the map of Europe. We are going to see how Europe is going to be restored after Napo yet caused so many problems for Europe. So it was now time for them now to deliberate on the Vienna what a settlement. So what were the aims of the Vienna settlement? Why did they gather? Why did they meet here in 1814? 15 on the Vienna settlement number one 
They made so that they could redraw the map of Europe. The map of Europe had been disturbed. It had been shattered. It had been disrupted by Napo. So it was now time of restoring, time of redrawing, time of bringing back those spoils, those areas that had been taken by Napo during the Napoleonic era. So they wanted to redraw the map of Europe. They also wanted to work together. They wanted to integrate. They wanted to assist each other. It was time of coming together, time of cooperating, time of working for the betterment of what of Europe. So they met all. So why? So that they could work together so that peace was going to be everlasting in Europe. They also met so that they could encourage trade amongst themselves to trade. They wanted to trade amongst themselves by so doing now expanding their economies by trading amongst themselves. They also made why? It is because Napo had given them problems. So it was now time for them now to protect themselves against future French aggression. So they met here so that they could secure, they could protect themselves in the event of Napo causing uh, problems in Europe. Not only Napo, but another future Napo coming in in what in France causing problems for them so it was now time for them to protect themselves they also met why because they wanted to condemn activities of slave trade slavery by, by pirates these activities were seen as taking place in Europe so these were some of the move on and talk about the work that was done on the VA number one the issue of creating buffer zone aggression. So the statesmen met here so that they could create buffer zones. Buffer zones, we are talking about boundaries. So we see them creating buffer zones. We see them creating barrier states. Why were they doing that? They wanted to do so, so that they could protect themselves against future French aggression. Remember, they were roared. They were bombarded by Napoleon from 1799. Austria, 1800. You remember that Marengo in June, July. You remember Russia being roared by Napoleon. You remember Prussia being roared by Napoleon. So here now, it was time to protect themselves. So that is why they created buffer zones. That is why they created what barrier states. So that they could protect themselves against the future French aggression. So how did they do that Holland and Belgium they were united. Genoa was added to Piedmont. We also see that Austria took 39 German states. One, two, three, 39, so that she could protect herself, herself against future French aggression. <clears throat> we also see that Prussia took areas along the Rhine. 
Why along the line to protect yourself against future French aggression? So here they reacted, they acted. It was a way of acting. Because Napoleon had robbed me in Pama, he robbed me in Pama, so I was supposed to act. If you are robbed in Pama, if you are robbed in Pama, you act, you react. How are you going to react? You are going to look for board guards. So that when I come wanting you to give you Empama, Empama, a board guard will what will say, uh uh, don't give him Empama. Why? It is because he is my friend. So they had to put a bodyguard. Who is this bodyguard? Bafazon. Who is this bodyguard? Beria State. Who is this bodyguard? Holland, Belgium, being united. Genoa, to Pedmont. That is known as buffer zone so what can we say about the issue of buffer zones it showed that the statesmen on the vienna settlement were reactionary it showed that they were successful on the vienna settlement why were they successful it is because they were the countries that were roared by napoleon so if you were roared you know the pain of being roared so if you are roared what are you supposed to do you are supposed to protect what yourself for example, if your house is not fenced, every time criminals will, will be coming to your house stealing then what step are you going to do? What step are you going to take? You are going to put a jura or a fence. So what can we say after putting a jura? Can we say that you succeeded or you did not succeed? You succeeded. Why? It is because Vanambiva, those Zimbabwe's, those thieves are not going to come to your place to steal those chickens. So by so doing, what can we say about the issue of buffer zone, the issue of barrier states? We say that the statesmen on the Vienna settlement they were successful to a greater extent. Why greater extent? They protected themselves against the future French what, aggression. So here we see that it was a success. But other countries, they thought otherwise. But to these people who were roared, who felt the bombers and being kicked by Napoleon, they knew the pain. So if they knew the pain, what were they supposed to do? They were supposed to protect themselves. And that is what they did on the Vienna what a settlement. So we see them creating buffer zones. But however, on the other side of the coin, we can say that it was a success to a less why? Because they sacrificed the small states to their own advantage. For example, with the United Belgium and Holland, these two countries, they had different uh, what, uh, geographical what, uh, explanations. The, the people in these two uh, countries spoke different religions. Their economies were totally different. Their religions were totally different. So we see that to a less extent, they, these unions were not uh, what uncalled this this union was uncalled for why it is because these people they were totally separate they were totally different so they were not supposed to unite them so they sacrificed small states to their own advantage but when they met here the big powers they were not worried about small states they were worried about their security so what can we say about the issue of buffer zones we are seeing that it was a success to a greater extent according to Musso and basing on the explanation that I've given you. And we also see that the issue of buffer zones, it shows that the Vienna settlement was a reactionary word settlement. Let's move on and talk about the next aspect. What is it? We are talking about the issue of the issue of balance of power. B-O-P. We have got three terms here. Balance of power. Balance equilibrium equality and one plus one equals to two so we have balanced one and one and we get two so that is balance of power power we are talking about areas territories that they controlled in europe so they wanted to make sure that the big powers themselves they had equal spoils they had equal territories that they controlled in europe so what happened here we see that britain took areas such as ceylon Mauritius, cape colony trinidad and tobago her legal land she also took mauritius etc etc
Which areas did Austria take? She took areas such as Parma, Modena, and Tuscany. These three areas in what? In Italy. She also took 39 German states. Austria also took Lombardy and Venetia. So these are some of the areas that were taken by Austria. What about Prussia, Blaso, Franco? What areas did you get? Franco of Prussia, she got number one. She got Posen, the capital of Poland. She also got Danzig. She also got areas along the Rhine. Those areas along the Rhine. She also was given two-fifths of Saxony. What about Blazovangu, Tsar of Russia? Kurisik, Russia. She was given three quarters of Poland. She was also given Finland. So these were the areas that Russia was given. That is how they had to share the territories. That is how they had to divide the territories amongst themselves. So here on the issue of balance of power, they were distributing areas mm, amongst themselves. Britain, Torah, Torah, eh, Ceylon, Torah, Trinidad, Torah, what, Mauritius, Torah, Cape Colonies, uh, Austria took Torah, 39 German states, Prussia, areas along the Russia, uh, along the what uh, areas along the Rhineland, uh, uh, what uh, Tsar, Torah, Finland. So they were distributing areas equally. I want you to put quotes equally amongst themselves. So, what can we say about the BOP? These statesmen were they successful on the BOP? They were successful to a greater extent. Why? According to D. Richards, they shared these territories based on the map of 1804. In 1804, you remember that that is when Napoleon became emperor for life. When he became emperor for life, he now was in total control of what was taking place in France. So that is when he renewed his foreign policy. 1805, fighting against Britain at the Battle of Trafalgar. You remember that? That the following that same year, end of year, uh, fighting against Austria, Russia, following fighting against Prussia. That is when he started to dominate, taking so many areas in his foreign what a policy. And it never nango. What are we saying? We are saying that when they met here, gentlemen, Russia, Tsa Urkushinzoere, Metanik, Urkushinzoere, Koywe Kasurage. Franco, we are only taking my areas, Edu. We are only taking those areas that were taken by Napoleon when he started to be so under cunning in Europe in 1804, 1805. Saka my areas are so that is how they to share these territories based on this map of 1804. But Tata Rume problem in Russia. And Franco. Franco. Poland. Because Prussia was close to Poland. Eh? Russia, Taur, Franco, That is also what I wanted to say. I want also, I want also Poland. I also want Poland. Oh, so Prussia and Russia, you both want Poland. Yeah, I want Poland. Yeah, I want Poland. Don't worry. This issue, we are going to settle it. So, what are we going to do now? Russia, you are now going to take three quarters of Poland. Yeah. Prussia, you are now going to be given the capital seat of Poland in non Yeah, and we are going to compensate you. We are, we are going to give you two-fifths of Saxon. What do you say about Yeah, that is excellent. So Prussia was given two-fifths of Saxon. She was also given Porsen. Then Russia, that is why she was given three-quarters of what? Of Poland. So what can we say about this? Was it there was the balance of power? Yeah, because they were agreeing, taking first number one, areas that you possessed, they took but they also wanted other areas like 
Prussia and Russia. But that problem was amicably solved. How was it amicably solved? Russia, three quarters. Prussia, Posen, two fifths of what? Of Saxon. So we are saying that the Vienna settlement was a compromise settlement. They compromised. Yeah, Taura talk Prussia, talk Russia. They talked, so they compromised. So it was a compromise. What? A settlement. So what can we say about the issue of balance of power? It was a success to a greater extent. Why? It is because they took the areas that they previously possessed before Napoleon became a problem to Europe. Check this example. We have got police. Police is moving around in Mfakose. It's moving around in Mavuku. It's moving around in Mutapa in Guero. It's moving around in Rimoka. We have got stolen goods here, stolen goods, stolen goods. We have got plates, we have got teapots, we have got clothes that were stolen. Please come to the uh, police and identify your clothes. Come to the police and identify your items. Then we see people who go to the police. When they arrive to the police, they say that, you see that we have got this thing, this thing. Who, who is the owner of this thing? It was Britain. She took areas that she possessed. It's mine. My Johnson will go and take what she previously possessed. We have got this thing. Who's this? Who, who's the owner of this thing? We have got my pet. So we have got Russia. She took Finland. Who? Who? This thing belongs to who? We have got also my my Mati Gimu. Who now? We are talking about our uh, Prussia. She took the areas that she possessed. Then after distributing these areas, what can we say? We are now saying that the statesmen were successful. We are now saying that the police were successful. Why? Because they gave my Johnson, my Mati Gimu, my Suze, my Beto, those items that were taken away from them, they were given back to them. So when they were given back to them, my Britain, my Mati Gimu will be happy. Yeah, my plates were stolen. I've got them. My Beto, my Russia, yeah, Finland, yeah, I've got them. My, my uh, uh, Johnson, they were taken. Yeah, Prussia. So what? So they are filled with excitement. Why? Because these areas, this things were taken away from them. So by so doing, we are saying that the Vienna settlement, by balancing, by giving equally the spoils, they were successful. However, we see that there was an element of selfishness, there was an element of greedy, there was an element of greediness. For example, Austria took 39. 1, 2, 3, 4, 30, 30, 39. There were so many areas that Austria took. So there was an element of greedy. Then also there is an element of selfishness. For example, Britain only took areas that are enhanced enough for supremacy. We talk about uh, Ceylon, we talk about Malta, we talk about Trinidad, Tobago, Heligoland. Those areas enhanced the enough for supremacy of Britain. So that on its own shows an element of selfishness. But it's to a lesser extent. Why? Because Britain was a naval power. It's to a lesser extent. Why? Because Austria was the country that what uh, controlled those Italian what areas and German areas. So that is why we are saying it's to a what to a lesser what extent. So that is what we see on the balance of what of power. So what can we say about the balance of power? We see that the Vienna settlement it was a reaction they reacted. Eh? We also see that the Vienna settlement they also conserve it was a conservative what a settlement they conserved those areas that they previously what possessed. So it was a conservative what settlement. It was a compromise settlement. They compromised Prussia and Russia. Hallelujah. Then let's move on and talk about the third item that they discussed here. It was the issue of restoration of legitimate rulers. These rulers were the heirs. They were the rightful rulers who were removed from their positions. They were removed from their throne by Napoleon. They were forcibly removed. They were removed by Napoleon by force. So by so doing now, we are seeing that uh, these statesmen, when they met here, they had to restore those rulers who were removed by Napo, by Napo during the Napoleonic era. Who were the rulers who were restored to their positions? Number one, we have got Ferdinand VII of Spain. 
We have got Ferdinand the first of Naples. We have got the Pope in the Papal States. We also have Victor Emmanuel in Piedmont or Sardinia. Then here we see a new ruler coming into place in France in the name of Louis the 18th. Remember Louis the 16th, he was Gugwa de Musoro, he was guillotined, he was executed on 21 January 17, uh, what, uh, 18, uh, 21 January 1793. So here they replaced him with what? With Louis the 18th. So that is how they restored these rulers. So what can we say about what took place here on the restoration of legitimate rulers they were successful why because these rulers they were removed from their positions by force na napoleon you remember let me give you an example for example you learn uh, at your school you'll be removed from your your position you were appointed to become the new head boy then when a new headmaster comes now he removes you from what from that position so we see that you'll be angered, uh, you'll be discouraged. But we see that here now a new headmaster of Bawaya Shakari then say, no, that head boy who was removed should be replaced, should be what should be restored to the rightful position Yaka Bisiwa, that position that he or she was removed. So by so doing now, that is what they did here. So what can we say about this? They were successful. Why are we saying they were successful? It was because these statesmen who met here, they were elderly statesmen. They were elderly in the sense that they were worried about peace. For peace to be restored in Europe, what were they supposed to do? They were supposed to say, Madara, Yayaka, Visiwa. Madara. Why? Because if they Zosera did the Daras, eh? the Daras were going to maintain peace. The Daras were going to be worried about making sure that peace is there in what? In Europe. The Daras were going to suppress liberalism. They were going to suppress nationalism. And by so doing, peace was going to be restored in what? In Europe. This idea of republicanism, this idea idea of liberalism led to the French Revolution. Sanga, in order to suppress those ideals, they to Zosera the Daras. And that is what they did. They Zosera the Daras, Ferdinand the Seventh, eh? Louis the Eighteenth in France, he was in uh, about 65, 68 years old. So those Daras, they were going to make sure that peace was restored in what? in Europe. So they succeeded, clearly showing that the Vienna settlement was a reactionary settlement. They reacted and they to Zorera and they to restore those leaders who were removed from their positions by Napoleon during the Napoleon Guard era. However, we can say that to a lesser extent, some of these rulers were despotic in nature. For example, Ferdinand VII in Spain. He was unpopular in the country. He was a, he had a nickname. People had given him a nickname, Old Spider. Wanga Wachembera. His reforms were old fashioned. So people did not like him. They wanted him to be replaced by his son, Charles IV. The Pope in the Papal States. He was despotic in nature. So by so doing, he was unpopular in the Papal States. So by restoring these unpopular leaders, we can say that the statesmen on the Vienna settlement, they were less successful. Let's move on and talk about the last aspect, the issue of ignorance of nationalism and liberalism. Let's start with ignorance. From the term ignore, I met Moso, I ignored. Eh? Ignore is an action. So the Vienna settlement was a reactionary. Ignored. And so it was a reactionary word settlement. They ignored nationalism. What is nationalism? It's from the word national the people of the same country. For example, Moso from Zimbo, Zimbabwe. So nationalism nationalistic feelings tell me that i am a zimbo proudly zimbabwean hmm? I'll say that. so we are saying that the people of the same country they wanted to be brought together but the statesman ignored that liberalism is to say whatever they wanted to say hey, 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 we can beat you hey, 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 hey liberalism to express your mind to express your thought or your saying they ignored that because if people say yeah 
it means that they will be talkative and they can cause problems. So in order to avoid problems, they should sona. Hmm? They should sona. They should silence, close the mouth of people so that they will not say anything. If you want to say anything, mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you remain quiet, it means that peace was going to be restored. So the mouths, the muromos were sonad so that the people could not say anything. So that is what they did here. How did they do that? We see that Belgium and Holland, they were united. Like what I said, these people, people from these countries, they were of different nationalities, spoke different languages, different religions, economies were also different. We talk also about Finland being given to Russia, the Finns being controlled by Russia, the Poles, people from Poland being controlled by Russia, the Poles being controlled by Poland. Ignorance of nationalism. So because of this now, that is why D. Richard says that the people from other countries, these foreign nationals, they were branded together, they were put together as if they were goods to compensate here or there. So by so doing now, we see that their national interests were ignored. But the statesmen were not worried about that. They were worried about peace. They wanted to make sure that the Vienna settlement was going to be peaceful, was going to, be, uh, was going to guarantee peace in the near future. So what can we say about this? We can say that to a lesser extent they were successful, according to some scholars. scholars. But according to Musso, it's to a greater extent they succeeded. Why do I say so? I go along with D. Thompson, who says that the ignorance of nationalism and liberalism led the Vienna settlement to be a success. Because these two principles, according to, D, to, to, to Simen, they were seen as an anathema, they were seen as a problem, and they were likely to plunge Euro, Europe into another war if they were considered. So, according to D. Thompson, the Vienna settlement was a reasonable and statesmanlike settlement. Why reasonable and statesmanlike? It is because of ignoring these two principles. See my example. We have got a mwana, a musikana, a child by the name Getu. Getu is a problem. Europe is now having a problem. What happens to Getu? Getu every day he goes to club, drinking beer, drinking alcohol, smoking. He comes back home early in the morning. Today uh, is uh, a Saturday. You go to club, come back in the morning around five in the morning. The parents are worried. Getu, Getu now smoking. Getu now drinking. Getu now a problem. They are crying. Europe is crying. Why? Because the revolution in France brewed a dangerous person in the name of Napoleon. Dangerous in the sense that he wanted to dominate the whole of Europe. The whole of Europe. Europe is bleeding, is crying. So what should we do with the Getu? Getu now put in many skates. Getu Zara like that. Getu a problem. At school, he does no longer concentrate. So what should we do with the Getu? Let's call Gogo. -go. You know the Gogos when they come from Buera with their dresses and the handbag and Matomi. Let's call Mzukuru from Gokwe. Mzukuru will come putting you know, on a suit with Matek. Let's call Sekuru from Murewa. You will come Sekuru with, with also background. Sekuru wa uya ushakari. Let's call another Muzukuru. Kuba kwa begede buhera. You will come also. When they come now, when they arrive, they will see get with a miniskirt holding a, 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 a bottle of what of beer, drinking. What will they do immediately after sin? They will totally ignore wine. Because according to them, as long as Getu is still at school, he, she should not drink beer. So they ignore. Why? According to them, it's an anathema, D. Thompson. It's a problem. It's a problem which needs serious, what, immediate what, attention. So when they see Ghetto, they immediately go into the house. So when they in, are in the house, they will discuss about how best Ghetto could be restored. So how best was Europe going to be restored? Ghetto, come here. Take all your clothes, those short dresses, those uh, skinny jeans, skinny what what, those uh, those what, what bring them here. 
Go and buy matches at Pisa. Pisa in, Pisa in, Pisa in. Why? Because these are making you uh, what become a what a problem. What else? Nzara is look for a razor. Check on Zara. Soro, wig, what wig? Kurukaruka, no. Ngaro, Zuda, Seramuso, Zuda, and Gadish. Why? Because we know that when a child is still at school, he should have a zuda, he should have short hair. We don't want a child in Mazinzar. Phone, we, we are taking your phone. You should not have a phone. Then, my, my palms, I should no longer have my palms, but you should have G, my mother, my mother, my mother, my Yes. Sak badres I a piece or matros I a piece or ko kuno tengswa mcheka de kopi then let's go and tenga mcheka toso na zidres roshwa makumbom saka getu zuda plus nzara zaka chekwa plus matomi plus zidres apana mkoma na nomcheoka vanu kwa chungu ta we don't know madzimai ninga we don't know uh, 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 no one will look kucheoka uh, getu why it is because Ghetto because of Zudas, the dress, Roshika protected, Matomi Ake protected. No one who say, where do they get? No one. By so doing now, it means Ghetto, one of the years we are going to gather again. Then we'll be progressing. Oh, Ghetto, a charter, Ghetto, a charter. Yeah, a charter, charter. Europe was supposed to charter. How was it supposed to charter? It was supposed to have a wedding. People celebrating. How? Oh, by making sure that these ideals were surprised. So they totally surprised this. Why? It is because they wanted a PC for Europe. It is because they wanted to make sure that this was going to be guaranteed in what in Europe. It is because they were interested in making sure that another Napoleon, like the Napoleon that came in France, was not going to come in Europe. So how are we going to do that? We are going to restore elderly. We are going to restore statesmen who are going to, who are going to suppress these ideas. So according to Moso, the statesmen were successful by ignoring the ideals of nationalism and liberalism. So that is what we have on this interesting topic, the Vienna settlement. So what can we say on the whole? On the whole, I will go with D. Thompson. The Vienna settlement was a reasonable and statesmanlike settlement. It was a success to a greater extent. If you were Castle Ridge, if you were Tsar, if you were Franco from Russia, if you were Metternich, that is exactly that you are going to do what they did. Put yourself to the shoes. Zevarume out. Exactly what they did. It's also what we are going to do. Why? Because they were worried about peace. And for peace to be restored, that is what they were supposed to do. So that is what we see taking place on the Vienna settlement. So it was a reactionary settlement. It was a compromise settlement. It was a conservative what settlement they conserved. Uh, what year? It was a liberal what a settlement again. So that is what we have. Thank you so much. I'm Mr. Musso. I'm going to take a 10 minutes break. Then after 10 minutes, I'm going to come back again and look on our next topic, which is called the occupation of Zimbabwe. Thank you. Come back after 10 minutes.